check, 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 check. Good morning. Today I was so much on fire, I think I forgot uh, my laptop, <laughs> my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> but yes, uh, glory to you, uh, glory to God that I still remember what I prepared. So <laughs> I, I believe God will help me and He will give me grace. No matter, like for but this morning, uh, just want to uh, thank God that it's an honor to stand and uh, stand before you, each of you, and before God for His, you know, for this opportunity. And uh, I would like the thank, like uh, to thank Garpita and the worship team for leading us in a wonderful worship. I think God indeed was here. We, uh, I believe that we each of us, He has touched each of us in some aspects of our life. So glory to Him again. So this morning, uh, even as we look forward, we look at uh, okay. So I'll have to one more thing that I have to depend <laughs> on Paro this morning. Uh, so we, even before we move on, uh, this is like this is what we are looking, going to look at: uh, godly living from two, uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse one to fifteen, right? Um, I had a certain plan to be done, but I think God has a different plan. So we'll, I will walk through the slice. Uh, this time also, I would like to thank my wife, Arpita, for helping me <laughs> prepare the slice because it was, I think otherwise we would have been lost. Others, I would have been lost, maybe. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, when we look at this uh, chapter one, uh, like uh, of, from Peter. So Peter here is... Before that, let's pray uh, that even as we go through these verses, that God indeed would um, touch us and bless us, bless each one of us to be more like him, right? Not to be that we become big and fat, but uh, to be more like him in his likeness. Father God, we just want to commit ourselves before you this morning, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord God, that you are a Jehovah Jireh. You are a Jehovah Lord God, you are our victory banner, Lord. You are our, our defender, Lord. You are our righteousness, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this morning that you have brought us here, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you have, the given, you have given us the very breath, Lord God, that we are alive and we are able to come into your presence, oh God. We just come at this time of sharing into your hands, Lord. Lord, speak to us, oh God. Speak to me and every one of us, oh God, that we would be, we would grow in the image of your likeness, O oh God. Lord, that we would know what is the way that we ought to take, Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. So basically, today we will see... Uh, uh, today we will see uh, on, on you know how we can live um, an active godly lives, okay? Uh, how we can be an active in an active active state so uh, um, there are two states right you can be passive you can be active but today we'll see from this chapter what peter is trying to address and how we can if we are passive how we can be we become active okay so who among us this morning would like to be known as a failure in the christian life who among us would like to be known as a, you know, so and so person was a failure? None of us, right? It would be a stupid question to ask also, right? Who, will, who would like to fail? Everyone of us would like to, you know, ex excel, succeed. But nonetheless, when we uh, look at this verse today in, in the Bible, where there are a few people, you know, whom it has laid out, is called out, that they failed because they moved out from their faith. They moved from what they have learned. We have Demas, and uh, we can see, sorry, again, uh, uh, Demas who, who's uh, 
who Paul, who, he was with Paul. He was with Paul and Paul, uh, along with him, he was in the ministry and God, um, and Paul writes in uh, second in Philem, in uh, Philemon 124 and Colossians 414 and 2 Timothy 410. You know, uh, specifically in 2 Timothy 410, it says that he, uh, they must move away from faith. Right? In spite of Paul himself being ministering to him, being involved in the ministry of God, uh, being involved in the uh, work of God, he moved away from faith. So there are chances. There are chances that. Oh, break. Thank you. Thank you, Raja. Uh, there are chances that we can move from our faith, right? There are chances. If our focus is not on God continually, if you are not uh, connected to God continually, we can move away from God. And that's what is there in the scripture itself. 2 Timothy 4.10, we can read that. There's again another example given uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander in 1 Timothy 1.19.20, we can read. They moved away from faith. And here Paul again says, I handed over them to Satan so that they would know you know what they are They moved all for. They liked the world more than what they liked, you know, uh, doing God's work. Even today, we see so many uh, things happening. Like so many things have fallen. We see pastors falling. We see a Christian brother falling, moving from the faith. You know, he was once in fire, but now he doesn't want to. Uh, or it may be a situation that has caused, like, you know, I don't, God has not probably, you know, we put him on God, we try to push it on God. Uh, we say that he did not answer. So, you know, we just move back away from him, away from his presence. But what will happen, we know, like, if we are not in God, just like even today, Baya shared that if we are not, God is wanting us to be in his presence. I felt the word is done. When he shares that word, thank you for <laughs> listening to God, you know the spirit and sharing it with us. It's like the stage is done, the message is done. That's what it is. If we are connected to Him, then what more you need? You know, you can lead your daily life, everyday life, according to His will. Thankfully, uh, Peter gives us some secrets uh, in, from this chapter, and we'll see uh, what are those and. Uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, you know go through each of them and see how we can live a godly life. How uh, what what are the ways that we can use and what are the steps that we can take to be a successful uh, Christian, right? Successful is Christian is nothing but again uh, doing His will, knowing His desire, what is His plans for us, seeking Him. That is what I would you know uh, say it as a successful Christian. If you are faithful till the end, right from the day one that we have come to know, right from the day one that we, he has called us from the darkness into his marvelous light, if you are faithful till our last breath, I think, I think that is a success. Right? We lived a life successfully because we were faithful. Now, this is something that will come, and this is where he is speaking a lot of... Uh, steps for us, He's giving us seven steps, but for that we'll come back to this. These are words that I would like to uh, start with, 2 Peter verse 8. Can somebody uh, read it out? 8 to 11. And blinded and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins therefore my brothers be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things you will never fall and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen, amen. what are these things what is these things that he is mentioning of what is he writing of these things can guarantee you uh, 
our fruitfulness in God. If these things are found in your life, then we can be fruitful. We can, uh, you know, we will not be the, like the ineffective brand, ineffective brand, or we'll be like the fruitful brand, right? We are bearing fruit. When we read in uh, John 15, 1, 2, he says, I am the true vine, and my father branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Right? There's also a place where he says, if they are not bearing fruit, they'll be cut and thrown into the fire. Right? So we need to be careful of how we are living our lives. How, what's the way that we are choosing? What is the way or approach that we are taking? Even in Luke, if you see Luke 6, 43, uh, 44, no good tree bears bad fruit. Isn't it? We all agree. Not bad, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from berries. Isn't it? These things will prevent the Christian from being abandoned by the Lord, but will keep us productive and fruitful. 1 Corinthians 9.27 So first one, so one of the things of these things that Peter is mentioning is it will keep us fruitful. Right? The second one, it will uh, we'll be spiritually discerned. So there are a lot of people who lack discernment. They, they don't know at times where what is to be done. But when we are aligned to God, when we are rooted in God, we will have the discernment, the spiritual discernment that is required. We will know what is right. We will, God will reveal it to us, what is right. The Spirit of God will speak to us which way to go. Many people have absolutely no idea of spiritual discernment, what it is. Even some of us probably, you know, uh, they don't know what it is exactly. They are blind and easily astray, led astray. Like if the wind is flowing to the east, let's move to the east. If it's flowing to the west, let's move to the west. You know, they'll just keep moving directions as the wind blows. It's just the state of our spiritual life like that. Is it, are we spiritually not uh, can't we discern the Spirit of God? The third thing that he's trying to highlight is, uh, is guaranteeing you of the absolute salvation, assurance of salvation. Do we, uh, are we all you know, uh, are we all very assured of our salvation? Or was there times where you thought, did I really get saved? Did I really accept Christ? You know, if these question marks are there in you or in us right now, this morning, that means we'll have to get back to the Word again, get back to God. Because if we are rooted in God, we have the assurance of salvation. So people who evidently lack these things are probably, you know, are people who, who are not rooted, who are not rooted to the world, who are not connected. You know, for their, their Christians for just probably namesake, just going to church, coming back, um, have a normal week, five days, enjoy life. Some, they, they are successful, they grow, some grow, some don't grow, some live happily, some go through the struggles. But our assurance comes from God. The fourth, these things guarantee that you will never fall again. So when we 
if you see in verse 10, when we all these are from taken from the verses 8 to 11. So the fourth one from verse 11, we see that these things guarantee that you will never fall. Verse 10 says, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do not, if you do these things, you will never stumble, right? So if we have, this is the guarantee, if we are doing his will, if we are, you know, knowing of what God has done for us, we will not stumble. We will, because he is showing us the way, he has promised us to show us the way. So this morning, are you willing to, you know, uh, are you willing or desiring to know these things? Okay. If you are, then come along with this, along along with me this, on this journey. You know, if these things, these things guarantees uh, four things. Okay. Let's see what these things are. That I will always be fruitful, right? That I will have. I always have spiritual discernment that I will never doubt about my salvation and last that I will never fail as a Christian. So these are, so these are the things that Peter is writing in his letter, right? And, and these things uh, will look into more detail of what, uh, what's happening before the coming to know what it is. You know, we'll see uh, a bit about Peter. So we know about Peter, right? All of, of, all of us have heard about Peter. So if you can remember one thing, if you want to give a shout, what do you remember about Simon Peter? Rob? Yes? Sorry? E? Talks more, yeah, okay, interesting point. <laughs> yes, he denied Jesus after he walked on water. Anybody else? Okay, good, all the right answers. <laughs> we'll see one by one. He was a fisherman who left everything and followed Jesus, right? Saw Jesus transfigured on the mountain top. He was there. Yes. He walked on water when Jesus called him. He was the only person who walked on water. Yes. Along with Jesus, of course. He swore to go to his death alongside Jesus. He was so much like he was so active as uh, as we said, like you know, he's so talkative and everything. He just wanted to jump. He will be the first person to answer, but he was too quick to answer, but sometime he had his feet in his mouth, right? <laughs> so he struggled. He denied Jesus. He said, no, Lord, no, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you. I love you. Huh? But when Jesus said he will deny me after this, exactly after the third time the cock crow, he said, I don't know. <laughs> Who is this man? I don't know. I, I don't belong to him, right? Saw the resurrection of Jesus, right? This is the Peter that we know, personally charged by Jesus to feed his sheep. So we, when we see the, uh, all the points, you know, he, he was not confined or he did not, you know, uh, make these situations that we went through up and down, he always had a up and down. He used to climb, fall, climb, fall in his, in his character, in his uh, doing things. I would say he was, he was very passionate or zeal, but this zeal always went on a wrong shoot, you know? So, but then he was not defined by that. He was defined by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's where I want to bring us to the first verses that he says, if he come along with me. In the first verse, he says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. In the first Peter, when we read, he was like, I, the apostle. If you read that first one, Peter one, verse one, 
Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, right, in his journey. Here in 2 Peter, he humbles himself. He's saying, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. Somewhere he had a journey from where he could probably say, I'm Apostle Peter, to humbling down and saying, I'm Simon Peter, a servant. Is, is activating the word servant. And that's what we are supposed to be, the servant in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter whether we are just cleaning the chair or we are just putting a tablecloth, coming early, helping in set up, or if you're handling the PA system, or, or even if you're a pastor or a leader or a senior overseer, right? Doesn't matter. But it says, Simon, a servant, we all should have that serving attitude. We should have the serving heart in the kingdom of God. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. He continues that. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us. So he's here, he's, he's elevating. At this time he was in, in Asia, but right? he's addressing this letter to people uh, in Asia Minor, whether they are Jews or, or, or the Gentiles. Is addressing them. Whoever has accepted the gospel of Christ, whoever has accepted the good news that they sh he shared, people around is calling. Is we all are on the same level? He's saying we all are same. It's not like you no know, the great Paul or the Peter. Right? Is is we all are on the same when we accept Christ? When we accept the testimony of Jesus Christ, we are equal. And that's what he's trying to highlight to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So he's, he was defined by that. He's, 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 getting, he's saying that I'm not defined by what happened. It's, it happened, like, you know, I tumbled. I was the one who goofed up a lot of times. But he's saying, that, is, that doesn't define me. My situations, past situations don't define me. My situation defines me is the righteousness of God. And this morning when we were singing the song, Hallowed Be The Name, and, and, and I like that interesting word, and I was sharing it uh, at home, you know, the word Jehovah Sitkeno, imparting righteousness to me. The same righteousness, the righteousness that God imparts to us when we first accepted him remains with us. If we, but when we move away like Demas and Alexander that we saw, if you move away from his uh, word, then we might be in a questionable situation. But God loves us so much, right? Even even in the last moment, if we come back, say, with a repented, completely repented heart, He is, he is willing to forgive us. He, he gave His life for us. And that's the very purpose. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they were thrown out, but God did not leave them. Right? He, he was with them. He provided for them. They grew in number. And that's how the world, we know that the world exists. And God, in all in all, He came, He sent His Jesus, He left His throne, He came to this earth so that we have the connection back, we have the relationship back with Him, to establish the relationship. Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Saying, so whoever has obtained that faith, Grace and peace to you be multiplied. Isn't that wonderful? Grace and peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. Grace that, you know, we were supposed to be dying, we were supposed to be on the cross, but he hung up for us. He said, be multiplied to you in knowledge of good and of Jesus our Lord. 
verse 3 as his divine power given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue i'm just reading to the scriptures since i said like i don't have my book and but god is here and he is leading us in verse 3 is divine power what does it mean to you what is this divine power that he is talking about what is it by the way peter is on the last stages of his life while he is writing this letter and he is about to die he knows that he is going to die in some time we will see that in verse 15 when we end this but then you know he is writing this to us to ensure that we are not lost but we are reminded of what god has done for us we when we accept that faith when we first accepted god he has imparted his righteousness to us marvelous he has given us grace and peace that multiplies for each day it's not that you know only one day we see that grace of god or only one day we have the peace and next day we lost the peace it's not that he says peace that surpasses all understanding it's for every day of our life every situation of our life as his divine power has given to us all the spirit of god is a divine power in us he is god he is the creator he has created everything and everything above the earth under the earth under the sun and above the earth man beast reptiles everything how can we have this contain this divine power how can we have this divine power in us this is only for christians only for people who have put their faith in him only for people who have who, who are walking on the path that he has called was for by which by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this again is mentioning through this you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust we know the world is polluted we know that jesus says, don't seek the world seek me but the word of god says that right do not follow the world because that is going in a doomed direction is going to be doomed but seek me come i have the living water i am the fountain of life i am your shepherd i know what is required i know you know what you need i know the troubles you are going through and i can set them right verse 3 and 4 are so powerful it's not a normal testimony church it's not a normal passage it's a profound doctrine the very very profound doctrine that we are looking at by this time he and paul they were in connection they they you know when we'll see a lot of similarities what paul wrote and you know what peter is talking here in this chapter 2 in the, in the second uh, peter in this letter it's so wonderful right we will be partakers when we have to look at things around we cannot be we don't belong to god right you you have to do so many things you have to do so many rituals but it is as long as you are alive you will not know whether you were part of that god yeah you be, if you are belonging to that god if they are so called god you know are you have, are uh, you know has selected you we don't have we will not know the answers but here 
when we look at gospel, when we look at the life of Jesus, we see that Jesus, in Jesus we have eternal life. Whoever has received the Son has received you know, uh, the salvation, the gift of salvation in, through Jesus Christ alone. Whoever has put their faith in Jesus Christ has received this salvation. So when we are partakers of, of, uh, of this divine nature, we escape from the pollution of this world. We escape from the lust things of this world. We escape from the wrong things that are happening in this world. Because it, our spirit in us, the God spirit in us, purifies us. It, it just, you know, it, it unsettles us because if you are even taking a wrong path, you know, the spirit of God will unsettle us because it doesn't want us to be lost because it knows that, God knows that if we go, we have no control on our human nature. We'll just be drifted and drifted and drifted and we'll, you know, we'll be lost forever. So that's why God keeps knocking. God keeps knocking that son, daughter, it's not the right path. Come back. Come back to me. Well, let's move forward. Just want to highlight our seven steps that God, um, that Peter is uh, highlighting here, right? For godly living. It's all for godly living. If we are not, then we would be, it's a question mark. Maybe we can introspect this morning as we see the next few verses. What is that picture? What is that you see on the screen? Love, heart. One more answer was there. Was that? Pink. Oh, <laughs> somebody <laughs> color. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Just like the person who was creative of making the slide, the creative answers also. So, yeah. <laughs> This is a heart, you know, this, this is the heart of the entire story. This is the heart of the matter, right? And that's what I want to draw your, our attention this morning. It says, verse 5, if somebody can read this, verses 5 to 7. Maybe, Raja, you can give mic. You know, just. Antivate, antivate. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if, it, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. God just wants me to rely on him. <laughs> Even my phone is going off. It's not working. <laughs> Fine. Lord, have your way. We saw who Peter was, right? A man who stumbled, fumbled, but he was not moved by circumstances because he defined that the righteousness of a God and Savior Jesus Christ.
is writing to the Jews and, his, and, and the Gentiles alike to experience the grace and peace that comes through the knowledge of God This grace and peace comes from the knowledge of God. This, that's something that I want to again spend some time, you know, which will give us grace and peace to face our day. What is virtue as we see? Virtue of this li word literally means uh, excellent living. Okay, This word literally means excellent living. In one word, God is telling you and me that if we will live by the Bible and live morally pure lives, then he will guarantee those four invaluable gifts that we talked about earlier. Right? So this is very important. What is virtue? It's simple, it's excellent living. Living by the Bible. It just says that you have been given the word of God. You have the book with you. You are supposed to read it, meditate on it day and night. You know, when we see the book of, uh, in Psalms, that he, he who dwells on the word is like a tree planted by streams of living water. Right? Whatever season, Whatever season it may be, you will continue to draw strength from his word. The second word, uh, knowledge. Literally an understanding of the truth and how to live it out. It's about the knowledge of God and it means that, it literally means that how to live it out. The word is telling us that we can have all those things we discovered by having a sound knowledge of the doctrines of Christianity and by applying them to our lives and leaving them out. So knowledge, we can have, we, we have a lot of people who are very knowledgeable, but what do we do of that, of that knowledge? Or where does that knowledge take us? Or what does it, you know, how is it driving us? Which direction is it taking us? Is our knowledge that we have gained or learned helping us to live godly life? Then we are probably in the right direction. But if it's not, if, it's the, if our head or brain is saying something else, if our heart is not willing and is doing something else, which is not right in the sight of God, we are in trouble. To knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance. Now, uh, self-control, wow, this is an interesting topic. I just want to touch base on temperance, self-control. Okay. Temperance. You know, how many of us uh, get angry very slowly? Or, you know, we don't get angry at all. Or omni of us is like, you know, thinking of a second, this mobile goes zoom. Right? Whatever comes to the hand is goes flying. The neighbor should know something is there. People are there. <laughs> to God. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you. Phone, you can sleep. It's troubling me. Oh yes. So it's it's like we all get angry and we all lose our temper. But do we um, 
but that's not the self control that we are you know uh, we ought to show that's not the temperament that we have to show you know flying off the handle getting mad getting even how many of us have got even you know she told me this i will do this or i have done you know he is better singer than me i will also sing who oh, is how come you know he has so many talent and i don't have we become mad how can he play and i don't play why where am i going wrong the temperance word means self control it is one of the fruits one of the fruits of the spirit mentioned in galatians 5:3 i think that's the series that we are going through and then you know it it comes there and we will see that uh, in in few in due course of time it implies that i do not do as i please and control myself and do as the lord pleases so peter is interestingly is uh, addressing this issue right in this letter he is saying that we are defined by the righteousness of god our savior lord jesus christ he identifies himself as someone who has arrived, who has received salvation just like his audience like whoever is accepted like you and me we are in the same you know level it's not like i have learned directly from god you are learning from somebody 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 so you are very low no he saying we are equal we have accepted he is reflecting uh, god's faithfulness compared to our depravity or god's love and our need god's mercy and our sin without knowing jesus we have no way of knowing our depravity and his faithfulness our need and his provision for our salvation our sin and his sacrifice on our behalf it will be very difficult to to know without knowing jesus it's very difficult to know what is to be done in our life in romans 12:9 is 19 it says do not take revenge my dear friends but leave room for god's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord now don't please take your wives or husbands or children like that huh? it's is for something very serious offense if someone has really rebuked you or you know persecuted you if you are persecuted for the sake of gospel for the sake of his kingdom for the sake of his uh, your love towards god and for your for the work that you are doing for god if you for you know to that extent it goes forgive them he says forgive them you don't have to take revenge because some people are rich right some some of us are very rich we have lot of muscle power or man power behind us we know this party that party that person this person we just call hey bhai this aa gaya yaar ye thoda natak kar raha hai aa jao we will send 100 people hey dish dish you know badla le liya no god is saying no don't you utilize yes blessed you with those power we have blessed you with those contacts probably for some thing but we are not to use those things in a wrong manner this applies to every area of our life and uh, often we lack self control there are several areas we need to practice temperance is first our tongue gossip is a loose muscle right it just it without bone it just go hmm? we how many of us are uh, you know so quick to gossip telling another person off some people are doubting their salvation being unfruitful falling into sin and have no spiritual discernment because they cannot control their tongues we can see in james 1 26 james 3 1 to 12 proverbs 26 20 if someone we just can quickly read proverbs 26 20 proverbs 26 20 sure i found it without 
Right. Once again. So if you don't gossip, the quarrel dies down, right? A tempers, you know, some people lack the blessing because they cannot control their temper. It's just a friction and they're like gone. They get headache also, some people. Some people get headache because they are, they have lose their control, you know, their temper. I say, it's painful for them only, right? Again. Our temptations, everyone is tempted, however not everyone falls into sin. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, however not everyone falls into sin, the difference is self-control. So when we exercise self-control, we can only exercise self-control when we are rooted in the word of God. Otherwise, we'll have challenges. Did I press it? Oof. I was excited probably, I was flowing, <laughs> so, fine, good to see sometimes, we have to, we should check her back, what's happening. Yeah, the next one is patience, we see that, you know, the heart of the matter is virtue, knowledge, self-control, patience, godliness and brotherly kindness. What is patience? Patience. In other words, is endurance. Right? The patient, the patient person is the one who does not deviate. A person who is patient, who has, uh, you know, we call some people, right? Only few people we call. Uh, he has a lot of patience, man. But only till the extent that we know them, right? <laughs> we don't know them <laughs> how they are in their house. We know don't know them how they are with their friends. But yes, the patient person is the one who does not deviate from his, uh, from his devotion to God, even by the greatest trials. He is like the wine clinging to the tree during the severe storm. Many are suffering from the loss of the four great blessings just because they allow the slightest little wind to blow them off the course. The patient person is one who has endurance. The fifth one we see is godliness. It means walking in the view of his greatness. Right? Because we covered like virtue, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Godliness means walking in view of his greatness. It refers to the person who has every action and attitude yielded to the fear of the Lord. This, person's, this person spends time, uh, this person spends his life in a state of God-likeness. Right? He spends his days serving God and serving man. Second Chronic, uh, 1 Chronicles 16.11 says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Many are in doubt, in sin, in trouble, because they reach a place in their walk with God where they just didn't care anymore what God thought about anything. They don't want, uh, they, they do not, they do what they please. These people have forgotten that God speaks loudly and carries also a big stick. You know, in Revelation it says that God is, whoever God loves, he, he you know, uh, corrects them. He, in, in his love, in his gentleness, he corrects them. Opposite of godliness is self-motivation. The, uh, the person who practices godliness is the one who understands that God truly is an awesome God. He fears the Lord and strives at every time to please Him and Him alone. We can read that in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. He realizes that it does not matter what others think as long as, long as God is pleased. He is, for Him is only one focus, that 
is God pleased with me? Is God pleased with my life? Is God happy? Am I walking in His ways? Next, brotherly kindness. If Christians could, could practice the second great commandment, which is stated in Matthew 22, 39. What is it? Love your enemies like yourself. Is it? Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. If only we follow or understand that commandment, then they would experience those four great blessings that we spoke about in the beginning. If you want those blessings, if you want to be fruitful, if you want to be, if you want to have spiritual discernment, if you want to be alive, some people wonder, like, have I really got this salvation? Have I really, am I really saved? But the last thing is, uh, is love. It, it, Peter talks about, you know, love. Without this, everything is incomplete. Without love, whatever big thing you do, whether you do miracles, you do, you are a great successful person in everything that you did. You are the highest scorer in your marks in your school days or college days, or you are the topper in your company. Whatever you do, is, everything is waste. Everything is meaningless. Everything under the sun is meaningless. If you don't have love, and God here is drawing us to his agape love, unconditional love. It doesn't mean that, you know, when we are in the world, we have to be wise because God has given wisdom. It doesn't mean that we blindly, you know, are you know, no. But he's, he's calling us to his love. He's, he wants us to understand his love for us what he has done, what he has gone through, just to restore us back to him. And Peter is giving us these seven steps. The one, the love is in the center of it. Right? So without love, all those things will not function. If you don't have love, then we will struggle. So just Take a quick second. You can see how many of thing of how many of a list of the seven we have right now. You know this morning. But don't be happy if you have three or four, but you still have you no. Know, you know you still have to develop three. But if you have two or one, only one, then it's a point where we need to come back to the love. Ask God to fill us with His love. Virtue, uh, moral uprightness, holiness, excellent living. 1 Peter 16, be holy for I am holy. Moral purity refers to every aspect of our life. Physical, mental and spiritual purity must be maintained if we expect his blessing in our life. Knowledge, understanding of truth and learn how to live it out. We are, we are to get into the word, okay, very carefully, you can read. Second Timothy 2.15 says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are to get into the word. How can we get into the word? Only when we read it. If we don't read it, we will not. We are to let the word get inside of us. It's not like, I have read Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. Uh, Psalms 1, you know, do not walk in the way of sinners, do not more sit in the seat of mockers. Uh, no, if done and close, okay, done. I'm done with my, you know, I've given God time. No. We have to allow the word to get into us. As it says in Jeremiah 15, 16, your words were found and I ate them. And your words your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. You know, we, we are supposed to learn the word that is given to us. I know that every one of us are aware that we have right now this time, you know, we can hold this book in our hand. 
we can hold the word of God in our hand. There are countries who are struggling with just one page. There are places where they don't even have the opportunity or liberty to read. How are we using this time? How are we utilizing this freedom or this opportunity that we have? You know, the entire book and the entire Bible, the given word of God with us. 1 Peter 2, 3, as newborn babies desire pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. But surprisingly, your 1 Peter, you know, the first Peter, uh, the letter of first Peter, it talks about like the baby milk, you know, baby feeling hungry, you feed him milk, he'll be happy, you'll be playing, again he'll be hungry, you'll feed him milk. But the second Peter talks about doctrines, found doctrines. We need to read his word, meditate on his word day and night. Self-control, I do not do as I please, but I should do as the Lord pleases. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. It's very important, our tongues, is, it is without control. We should tame our tongue, that's what James says. Our tempers, we should and. Uh, you know, introspect our tempter, uh, tempers, how fast, how wide, what is the vitality, even I think the meter, the greatest scientist should have made, you know, would not capture the velocity of our mind, our temper, how fast they change. Our temptations, if we are not close to God, our temptations will drive us away. It may be the lust of the world, lust for anything, or desire to be uh, of any material thing rather than you know, uh, desiring God. So anything that is not of God will lead us away from Him. Patience, endurance, and perseverance. A patient person is not severed from his devotion to God, even by the greatest of trials. So we saw Paul, Timothy, um, we saw Peter, we saw, you know, all the disciples, that they were not worried of what is going to happen to them. They, they were very only worried, they were only focused was, am I... You know, I want to be faithful till the very breath of my life. Godliness, walking in his, uh, walking in the, in view of his greatness, God likeness, right? And this is the ultimate uh, word. The person who practices godliness is one who understands that God truly is an awesome God. He fears the Lord and strives at every turn to please Him and Him alone. It's not like, uh, you know, when I'm happy, I'll worship. When things are working fine, I will worship. When things are, everything is smooth and I'm woken up fresh, I will worship. No, in every situation, whether you're going to trial, whether you're tired, whether you're, you know, uh, going through a tough situation, it's not a pressure. It's not a pressure. That God is like, you must. But isn't it that you know, God who so loved us, gave his life for us? Is, is it a conditional love that he has shown us? No. He showed us a unconditional love. Fear God commandments for this is man's all. So this is the command that we need to keep. This is fear the Lord and keep his commandments. Brotherly kindness. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 1 John 40 says this. Because if you are hating a person whom you see day to day or a person whom you meet in your office or your colleague, uh, in your neighborhood or in your house, if you hate that person, how, do you, how can you love me whom you have not seen? So that's the end of it. You know, that's the end of our faith or our testimony. If we cannot love the person whom we see, then the question should be, do we have the love of God in us? Love self-sacrifices. It's unconditional love. Love God and others first. So when we love, when we have this love of God in us, so others take, you know, uh, we, we, we are not focused on a self thing. We are focused on what, uh, first thing, God, and we give others the first place, then the love, you know, the love of God is unconditional to us. And uh, when we have received that 
love we are able to sacrifice you know uh, probably maybe it's a giving or is a time that you have to give or you know or or anything that is uh, in need which would help you know our brothers or sisters in christ but if but uh, the last line is very uh, it does touches every one of us right but not to have love if you don't have love it profit me uh, it profits me nothing so if you don't have love nothing is meaningful so as we have seen these seven verses uh, seven secrets that god has uh, that peter has laid out for us you know uh, virtue from faith virtue from uh, virtue knowledge um, from knowledge temperance from temperance patience godliness brotherly kindness and he ends with love and he says if you don't have all these things we cannot have we cannot be fruitful we cannot uh, you know have spiritual discernment we cannot you know we are not we are unsure of our salvation and you know we can fall so if we do not have that seven things or if we have those seven things or if you are building up those seven things you know if you want to be that's what i want to end with if you want to be fruitful if you want to have spiritual discernment if you if you you know uh, if if you want to encounter that doubt that you're saved forever or your salvation if you you know do not want to fall in your christian walk then we should have those seven things how can we have that uh, when we seek the lord right when we seek the lord for all these things so all these things which peter has mentioned if we seek i encourage that we could seek them we could read this chapter again and i believe that god would uh, speak to you individually of the areas he will to you which are the areas that you are lacking and god will you know when you ask god for strength he will train you he will build you up in those areas it's important that we are aligned to his word it's important that as peter is writing uh, to us in a closing remarks that i would just want to say that be diligent to make your calling and election sure so um, be sure that we have we have the step of faith that is just mentioned you know the, all the steps that we have seen through seven steps that peter has given to us help us if we have those fruit in us then we will be able to walk in his likeness we will be we will be able to walk and not fall and even if we fall because we are humans we will be able to stand up and walk you know take and come back to the right path so uh, may god bless us and uh, be with us even through the week and the days to come because we are uh, living in the end times if we are not close to the word of god then uh, is difficult times that are coming ahead